The Role of Paul in Christianity The Role of Paul in Christianity and How He Destroyed the Teachings of Jesus Christ When Jesus Christ began His mission to call the Israelites back to God, many of the Israelites and Roman authorities were far astray from the truth. While many Israelites and Roman authorities rejected the message and teachings of Jesus Christ, a group of humble, sincere people of the Israelites believed and accepted His message and teachings. They accepted that God had sent Jesus Christ to guide them to their Creator. Jesus Christ asked the Israelites to be his helpers in God's cause, to call them back to the worship of one God. Some of them responded. This group of devoted followers held in high esteem by Islam submitted to God and pledged their allegiance to the Almighty and his messenger, Jesus Christ. These companions, helpers, supporters, and friends of Christ were known as the Twelve Disciples or Apostles. The name Disciples or Apostles is used to differentiate Jesus' close companions from the remainder of his followers, whose numbers later grew. When God elevated Jesus Christ to the heavens, the Jewish people remained persecuted and did not have much power. No uniform authority stood to establish and maintain the actual message and teachings of Jesus Christ. The followers of Jesus Christ dissipated after his departure. And little support remained to carry on his message, except for those who witnessed Jesus Christ and relate his message and story to those who were not there. Presenting it from their perspective Later, strange new theories spread that were never preached by Jesus Christ, from him being an imposter to being the divine Son of God. Around 35 C, a man named Saul of Tarsus came, he later changed his name to Paul. Paul was a Roman citizen, a Jew, and the enemy of Jesus Christ. He was a zealous persecutor and killer of Jesus Christ's faithful followers. En route from Jerusalem to Damascus, Paul claimed that he saw the light when he saw Jesus Christ appearing to him, filled with the Holy Spirit. He was chosen and commanded to teach and preach acts that Jesus Christ never did to the masses. Paul taught concepts contradictory to what Jesus Christ and faithful followers of Jesus Christ were teaching. Paul provided no proof as to what he claimed to receive. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 verses 11 and 12 while Jesus Christ is the central focus of Christianity, the founder of modern Christianity is not Jesus Christ. Instead, it is Paul because the version of Christianity that has survived is not the version that Jesus Christ preached. Instead, it was the version that Paul preached when he claimed Jesus Christ came to him in a vision and told him to preach new concepts. He converted to Christianity and wrongfully began calling people to worship Jesus Christ and spread strange teachings. Due to his power, wealth, and relationships, people started to adopt these strange beliefs and teachings, while the true disciples of Jesus Christ disapproved. The disciples clashed and argued with Paul because of his innovative and bizarre teachings, and the New Testament references this fact. Many Christians mistakenly took him as one of the disciples of Jesus Christ due to his claim that he was, but he was not, nor did he ever meet Jesus Christ. While some Christians elevate Paul to sainthood, Paul was responsible for destroying the teachings of Jesus Christ. He told people they did not need to follow God's laws, even though Jesus Christ suffered and struggled to convey the message of God, which included teaching people to obey God's commandments. Many people took Paul's word and believed him, even though Jesus Christ never violated the laws of Moses that came before him, and even though the Bible clearly states, till heaven and earth pass. The one that breaks the law will be called the least person in the kingdom of heaven. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished therefore anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 verses 18 and 19 This verse explicitly states that anyone that breaks the law or teaches others to break the law will be called the least person in the kingdom of heaven. On the contrary, the verse states that whoever practices and teaches the law will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Almost all the concepts of the modern-day teachings of Christianity, including the concept of Jesus Christ being the Son of God and Atonement, are from Paul and not from the teachings of Jesus Christ. As such, the teachings of Paul contradict the teachings of Jesus. While prophets of God performed miracles to prove they were sent from God, such as when Jesus Christ healed leprosy and the blind, Paul did not perform any miracles or show any proof whatsoever that he was carrying the word of God or even the words of the prophet Jesus. Paul changed his name from Saul to distance himself from his former reputation as an enemy of Jesus Christ and a prosecutor of Jesus Christ's disciples. Paul met the disciples of Christ occasionally but was not fortunate enough to live in their company. 
When he later came into the picture after the departure of Jesus Christ, he made some severe changes to the religion to win over the Gentiles, non-Jewish people. He introduced what became vital concepts of Christianity, including the idea that Christ is the Son of God, that he sacrificed himself on the cross to save humanity, and that all one needs to do to earn paradise is to believe Christ died for his sins. Half of the New Testament is written by this man who never met Jesus Christ in his lifetime. Yet, Christians do not question the authenticity of this exonomy of Jesus Christ and thus take his word as truth. The book of Acts in the Bible holds three contradictory accounts of Paul's so-called conversion when he claims he saw Jesus Christ in a vision. The story has many holes. Acts 9 verse 7 states, The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless, they heard the sound, but did not see anyone. This verse states that the men traveling with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could not see, but in Acts 22 verse 9, there exists an apparent contradiction. The verse states the men traveling with Paul saw the light but did not hear the voice who spoke. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Did the men that traveled with Paul see the light or hear the voice? Why don't we have records of these witnesses to testify to this significant event? The answer is simple, this event never happened. The New Testament that is now in existence contains more writings of Paul than any other source. All his reports were written before the four Gospels. They are influenced mainly by the teachings and innovations of Paul, even though his writings consist of hundreds of inconsistencies and contradictions. Paul abolished God's laws, such as not eating pork, fasting, observing the Sabbath, and the instruction of circumcision. The early devoted followers of Jesus Christ struggled for years to uphold the teaching that only one God, the Father, should be worshipped, and Jesus Christ was only his human messenger. The real followers of Jesus Christ opposed the blatant misrepresentations that Paul was wrongfully decimating. They had a strong understanding of his message and tried to maintain the purity and clarity of his teachings, worshipping God the Father alone and following his commandments. However, Paul gave Jesus Christ's faithful disciples a bad reputation. Paul gave these faithful disciples, who were with Jesus Christ all along, supporting and helping him, the reputation of being lazy, misguided, and hypocritical. People mistakenly believed that Paul understood the message and teachings of Jesus Christ better than the disciples, even though they lived with Jesus Christ and Paul had never met him. How bizarre is that? Since the innovative teachings of Paul appealed to the Gentiles, non-Jewish people, Jesus' faithful followers were unable to stop Paul's misguidance. Although the first Christians were Unitarians who asserted the unity of God and would have rejected the doctrine of the Trinity. Jesus Christ's message of the absolute oneness of God lasted in its original purity for only a short time, then diminished over the years. The very first Christians were not Trinitarians and, in fact, never had heard of the Trinity, as many current-day biblical scholars acknowledge. Some Christians developed different beliefs about the prophet Jesus over the next few centuries. They claimed that he was divine, calling him the Son of God, which eventually became the dominant Christian belief. Sadly, Christian leaders took Paul's beliefs as their religion even though his teachings contradict the Bible, and Christian leaders abandoned the actual teachings of Jesus Christ. Many biblical scholars recognize and admit that the formulation of modern Christianity did not begin with Jesus Christ, instead, the faith started with Paul, as shocking as that sounds. Sadly, Paul, not Jesus Christ, is the true founder of modern Christianity. Today, only Muslims follow the actual teachings of Jesus Christ, which we will prove later in this book. About a hundred years later, after the departure of Jesus Christ, a church father by the name of Tertullian began teaching and spreading the concept of the Trinity. About three hundred years after the departure of Jesus Christ, the Roman pagan emperor Constantine converted to Christianity and adopted this strange minority view of Christianity. He believed that Jesus was the Son of God and that all one has to do to attain salvation is to accept the fact that he died for our sins. Constantine believed in many concepts that date back to Roman paganism. The emperor contacted the Council of Nicaea to discuss and resolve whether Jesus Christ is the Son of God and other related matters. The Council of the Christian Leaders at Nicaea understood Paul's strange belief set as the sect of Christianity they would follow. Constantine was the first emperor to make Christianity a state religion after Christians had been persecuted and killed for 300 years simply for being Christian. The worship of the Roman sun god was rampant during this period. Constantine's strange sect of Christianity slowly grew in numbers, and the Pauline Church eventually gave birth to the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Protestant Church. Constantine banned all other Christian sects and executed millions who followed other Christian denominations. Only a tiny remnant remained of the actual teachings of Jesus Christ. 
God says in his final book that modern-day Christianity is based upon the whims of misguided people, who in turn misguide others. Say, people of the book, do not overstep the bounds of truth in your religious beliefs. Do not follow the whims of the people who went astray before you. They have led many others astray, and they continue to stray from the right path, Quran 5, 7. It is very problematic that Christians take the words of Paul and others who came after the teachings of Jesus Christ to be more valid than the words of Jesus Christ. Modern Christianity has been reduced to an interpretation of the words of Jesus Christ within the context of Paul. Constantine and the Pauline Church also took hundreds of manuscripts and gospels that contradicted Paul's views banned and destroyed them. Some of these manuscripts were written by the disciples themselves. The ancient manuscripts, written initially in the original Aramaic and Hebrew, were destroyed, and only the Greek and Latin manuscripts were spared. The words of Paul today form most of the books of the New Testament. Hundreds of manuscripts, including Gospels and religious writings, were considered merely apocrypha, not part of the accepted canon of scriptures. The Church of Paul chose four Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to be their books for political reasons. Paul's church modified certain verses and inserted what they claimed were inspired verses into the Bible to support their strange, novel views. Later, God sent his final messenger, Muhammad, to humanity to restore his message once again. Prophet Muhammad thus reformed God's religion. This religion of God is called Islam and has always been Islam, which means submission to God. God sent his final book to humankind, the Holy Quran, with Prophet Muhammad, confirming that the message sent by Jesus Christ was modified and corrupted by the human hand. So woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands and then claim, this is from God, to exchange it for a small gain. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they have earned, Quran 2 hours 79 minutes. Misery and great suffering awaits those who write the scripture with their own hands, and then say, falsely, that it comes from Allah. Exchanging the truth and guidance for a small gain in this world, such as money or leadership. They will experience misery and suffering because of what their hands have written, through which they told lies about Allah, and for whatever wealth or leadership they may gain through these lies. They say, falsely, that the fire of hell will not touch them and they will not be in it except for a few days. Ask them, O Muhammad, if they have had a promise from Allah that this will be the case, if they have had a promise, then Allah will not break his contract. Or ask them if they are saying about Allah what they do not know. Surah Al-Baqarah, 79-80 When God sent Prophet Muhammad and his final book, the Holy Quran, the small number of faithful followers of Jesus Christ who worshipped God alone, and did not take Jesus Christ as the Son of God or Divine, were among the first to accept the Holy Quran and the Prophet. Refutation of the Christian lie that Paul is a prophet in Quran By Ibrahim Safuddin The Claim In all their desperation Christian missionaries have now started to claim that according to the Quran Paul was a prophet of God. Their conclusions are based on conjectures and the misrepresentation of the text of the Quran. Simply put, there is not a single place in the Quran which even mentions the name Paul let alone mentioning him to be a prophet of God. To make such claims, the Christian missionaries run to Tafsir ibn Kathir. They read out the Tafsir by Ibn Kathir regarding the 14th ayah, verse, of the 36th surah, chapter, of the Quran. Verse under question. 36, colon 14. When we, first, sent to them two apostles, they rejected them, but we strengthened them with a third, they said, Truly, we have been sent on a mission to you. Translation, Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Christian missionaries say that Ibn Kathir says in his tafsir of the Quran that this verse refers to Paul of Tarsus and thus Paul, Beulis, is one of the messengers of God according to Islam. Let's see whether Ibn Kathir makes such a claim. Ibn Kathir writes, The names of the first two messengers were Shaman and Yuhanna, and the name of the third was Beulis, and the city was Antioch and Tekiah. But the question is this Ibn Kathir's view? No. This saying is attributed to Shweb al-Jabai. Ibn Kathir is quoting Shweb al-Jabai. Ibn Kathir has also quoted interpretations of different people as well. He says that according to Ibn Ishaq the names of these three are I. Sadiq 2. Sadiq 3. Shalom Note, no Beulis, i.e. Paul, mentioned here. Later on Ibn Kathir in his tafsir refutes this and says that according to the preceding Quranic verses the people were destroyed. Historically there is no evidence that the city of Antioch faced such destruction and thus this cannot even be about the city of Antioch. Analyzing some tafsirs 
Now let's check Kurtubi whom these missionaries have labeled to be the number one Muslim imam. Tabari mentions Kurtubi. Tabari mentions Sadiq Sadiq Shalom. Someone else, Shamoon Yuhana. Al Makash said, Saman and Yahya did not mention Sadiq and Sadiq. According to Kurtubi, Izamasi, Allah Salam, Jesus, sent the first two as messengers to the king of Antioch. To him they said, We are disciples of Isa. The king jailed them and whipped them. This news reached Isa, Allah Salam, and he sent a third messenger, Shamun al Safat. Note, Kurtubi does not mention any Paul, Bealis either. We will now check another tafsir. Tafsir ibn Abbas. When we sent unto them twain, two apostles, Simon the Canaanite and Thomas, and they denied them both, so we reinforced them with a third, we strengthened them with Simon Peter who confirmed the message conveyed by the other two apostles. And they said, Lo! We have been sent unto you. Note, no Paul mentioned over there either. What we have done here is basically refuted the idea that the Tafsirs unanimously agree that one of the three people sent as messengers was Paul. There is a difference of opinion among the scholars of Tafsir which is evidence that neither the Quran mentions the name of Paul as one of the messengers nor did Prophet Muhammad ever mention his name with regards to this verse. Does the verse really talk about messengers, Rasul? Now we will go on to refute the idea that the verse is talking of a Rasul of Allah. The Arabic text of the Quran clearly shows the word used for these three to be Mursalun. Mursalun, which is the plural of Mursal means sent one. This word has been highlighted in the concerned verse above. Rasul, P.L. Rizal, in Islam, has a specific definition. Generally the word means, ambassador, messenger, envoy, emissary, forerunner, apostle, and courier. Mursal, P.L. Mursalun, means, sent one. This word, in the Qur'an can or cannot refer to a prophet of Allah. For example, in the Qur'an we see the following verse. But indeed, I will send to them a gift and see with what, reply, the messengers will return. Qur'an 27, 35 The same word Mursalun has been used. So does this mean that the messengers that Bilk is sent were Rizal? Another verse of the Qur'an at length, when the messengers arrived among the adherents of Lut, Quran, 15 hours, 61 minutes. Again, the same word Mursalun is used. Does this mean that the angels which came to Lut were Rizal? Of course the answer to both the questions is no. None of them was a Rasul, but they were only sent ones. This word, Mursalun, simply means a messenger and not necessarily Rasulallah. Further Deception by Christian Missionaries the deceiving nature of these certain Christian missionaries is actually laughable. To support their claim, they try to quote another verse from the Quran. The translation of that verse is given below. Muhammad is no more than a messenger, Quran 3, 144. And they say that look, Muhammad was also only a messenger like the other three. But if we read the verse of the Quran, we see that the word used here is Rasul and not the general term Mursalun. A general term for messenger was used for the three people in 36 colon 14 but for Prophet Muhammad the special word Rasul has been used in this verse. Further the verse continues. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. Quran 3 colon 144 This part of the verse talks about the previous Rizal of Allah. And in the Arabic text, for them, again the word Rasul is used and not the common word Mursalun. Hence, clearly the three that the Quran is talking about in Surah Yasin, 36, verse 14 were not Rasul, but messengers, the sent ones, sent by Jesus on the directive of Allah. Let's give an example to make things clearer. If Allah informs Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to send Omar, radiallahu anhu, to Persia for du'a, does that not mean that Omar, radiallahu anhu, is a messenger, Mursalun? Of course he is a messenger. But it can never mean that he is a Rasul. Similarly, these three were not Rasul, but were only messengers sent by Isa al Hisalam, Jesus, on the directives of Allah. Further Evidence For more evidence we have to read Surah 36 verse 16. They said, Our Lord doth know that we have been sent on a mission to you, Quran 36, 16. This is a significant verse. 
These three supposed Rasul of God go to a city, and there they do not say our Lord sent us on a mission but rather say our Lord knows that we have been sent. Clearly when a Rasul of Allah, i.e. Jesus in this case, sends a messenger, i.e. Paul, Shamoon, Yohanna or any of the other names mentioned by scholars in this case, to another city. God knows that they have been sent. It does not mean that God actually chose them to be Rasul and sent them. The Last Blow It has clearly been refuted that according to the Quran or the Tafsir Paul was a Rasul of Allah. For the final blow to the deception which the Christian missionaries tried to create, let us take a look at a hadith of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a clear hadith from the mouth of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Narrated Abu Huraira, I heard Apostle saying, I am the nearest of all the people to the son of Mary, and all the prophets are paternal brothers. And there has been no prophet between me and him, i.e. Jesus, Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 55, Number 651. This hadith has also been recorded in Sahih Muslim and Abu Dawud. Conclusion The whole idea of Paul being a Rasul of God has been defeated in this article. 1. The verse 36 colon 14 does not talk about a Rasul but only about Mursalun. 2. Whether the verse in question refers to Paul or not is a matter of interpretation and clearly there are many scholars who don't even mention Paul's name in their tafsir of this verse. 3. Ibn Kathir himself refutes the claim of the city being Antioch. For, according to Sahih Hadith, it is clear that between Isa al Salam, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there has been no prophet and hence Paul could have never been a prophet. 5. Even if, for argument's sake, we would say that according to Ibn Kathir Paul is a Rasul of God, no tafsir can supersede the authentic Hadith. This would be Ibn Kathir's interpretation and Ibn Kathir was a man and not a Rasul of God hence his word can never be taken over the word of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.